Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We've got a jam-packed show lined up for you. This is what's coming up in today's show. However, Mark is at Silverstone and we're going to find out a little bit more about capacity with Colin, who's part of the MTD network side of the company. However, we've got two great guests with us. We've got Neil and Lee from Cogstill. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having Thanks us. For and Joe, of course. Well, thank you. Welcome, guys. <laughs> thank you. Now, I love your opening statement of making precision tools for over 100 years. This is so impressive. Talk us through the history of Cogsteel. Thank you. I'd love to. Um, yeah, Cogsteel founded in 1914 back in Detroit, Michigan in the US. Um, it was founded by a guy called Stuart Cogsteel, and we're now on our third generation of um, owners who are all still in the family, who have had very hands-on um, input into the company. And when... It, Cogsdale first started, we were working with the likes of Henry Ford and the Dodge Brothers, making innovative tooling solutions for production. Um, at the time, the Model T Ford was, in, uh, was, uh, was around and they were producing 4,000 cars a day. So they needed some new technology to improve their output and reduce the cost so they could sell the cars to the everyday public. Really? Wow. It's, it's interesting how you see yeah, a company story, begin. Yeah. Henry Ford. Yeah. So yeah. What, what tools are you best known for? Okay, we have, we have two different ranges of tools. We have what we call our core products. So we, um, we basically develop the single um, pass deburring tool. So this is one of the smallest tools that we actually manufacture, which is deburring a 1.5 millimeter hole. Um, so we have our deburring range, we have roller burnishing tools, which are all finishing tooling. We do um, single bladed reamers and fine boring tools, known as the chef cut. And then we have an, a completely separate product range called ZX. I think we're going to talk a bit about that later yes. on, aren't we, the ZX? Right. Yeah. Because you've got, you haven't just got one um, industry that you fit into, have you? It's a huge industry that you cover. No, that's absolutely right, yeah. We, we do tools that, that range from um, pr producing uh, optics, uh, beer pumps, uh, right up to jet engine thrusters and, wow. and prosthetic limbs for the, uh, for the <laughs> GB uh, um, Paralympic team. And of course, you've recently moved and you've expanded, haven't you? That's correct, yes. Um, we've got two manufacturing facilities. We've got the one in uh, Camden in South Carolina and the one in Nuneaton in the Midlands. But we also have a, um, an office in Singapore, Cogstall Asia Pacific, and Cogstall GmbH in Austria, which are strategically placed to give um, global support. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it, actually. You've answered my next question because you're not just UK-based, are you? And uh, you, you export mm -hmm. a lot of work, don't you? That's right. I mean, we, we're represented in 40 different countries across the world by over 180 different distributors. Wow. Well, bigger than you would think. Mm. When you look at some of your tools, I see it is a great fit for the oil and gas, petrochemical industry. No surprise to everyone that that's, that's quiet at the moment. So has that affected your business at all? Um, well, it has, but what we've kind of done is we've diversified the product range, which, um, yes, oil and gas is a big part of our business, but we, the, the ZX range of tooling is, can be used in all kind of large, heavy manufacturing, heavy industry. So the likes of um, renewable energy, rail, marine, aerospace, um, I mean, a lot of the ZX tools are used for producing the, um, la the landing gear on aircraft. So technical support is really important to you as a company? Yeah, that's absolutely right. We we don't just we're not just selling a tool, um, we're selling a solution. So so we put guys there on the duckboard um, to to make sure that the tools do what they they're supposed, supposed to do. To do. Yeah. Yeah. And the facility in Neaton, can you explain to us how many people are there? How many um, you know machines? What machines have you got? Yeah, sure. I mean, we've got about 40, 43 people at present in Neaton. Um, it's a twenty seven thousand square foot facility. We moved there three years ago as the company expanded. A lot of the tooling is getting bigger and bigger and we just needed a larger premises to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. Of course, because what's the largest tooling that you're working with? Yeah, I mean the largest facing head that we're actually working on has got a stroke of 1.1 metres and yeah. it weighs over well, a tonne. You're going to need bigger a big... <laughs> just a slightly bigger than that. Just a little bit. I did wonder why you didn't bring it with you. <laughs> <laughs> just, on, just on the technical support, we just, uh, we're just looking at an oil and gas API window on a face grooving tool. Mm -hmm. So if I've got a drawing or a component, can I send you that drawing and you recommend tools, maybe come and see me and we, 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 you know, we drum out a process between us? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly what we do. Uh, we'll provide um, a, a technical engineer to come to your premises, look at your application and, and recommend the right tooling for you. 
You've got another saying called the finishing touch. Why yeah. do you say this? Oh, it's a great strap line, isn't it? Mm, I like um, it. <laughs> our, our tools tend to be the last tool in the job. Is that so, good it breaks? <laughs> yeah, no, we, we normally have to, we normally have to solve the problem. Yeah. 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 So it, whether it be whether it be surface finishing, whether it be sizing, whether it be introducing a compressive resi residual stress, or, or whether it be reducing the coefficient, coefficient of friction, um, mm. it's usually the last tool, hence the finishing touch. Right, okay Neil, I think it's about time. I think we need to head and push you over to Technical Corner. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Good luck with Geo. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Technical Corner. Welcome to Technical Corner today, Neil. Thank you. Neil is the International Sales Manager for Cog, Steel and Eaton. Neil, I want you to explain how this innovative ZX range works, please. Okay, Geo. Um, Basically, what you have here um, is a ZX420 facing head, and it works by converting the axial movement of the machine's quill into facing slide, radial um, facing slide movement of the head. Um, here you have a, um, a key and a slipper. Um, it's quite a simple process, really, for, for quite a, a technical tool. So, effectively, you're not just boring, you can open up bores or the grooves. And before we touch on that point, yep. Neil, I just want you to explain now, we're just coming on to screen, how you interface it okay. with the machine, because it's very important. Yeah, what you have here is that this is, this is a bonnet that, that bolts to the outer spindle um, on the machine. Um, you see the bolts going in there, um, and then the quill is free to move inside that, uh, inside that bonnet. What you do is you connect the head onto the, onto the spindle, bring it back, and the four cam locks um, fasten the head to the bonnet, which is rigidly connected to the to the outer spindle so it's using that outer spindle to rotate the head and to hold the weight of the head and the quill just simply moves the facing slide. That's fantastic, it's quite simply explained there. So yeah. in regards to the interface of the machine you're not putting any stresses on the machine tool spindle? Not at all. And, and right. is it pretty much application specific or is it for no, large components? It's not really application specific. Um, we can do, we do heads that uh, that can do pretty much any operation that you could do or that you would normally have to do on a lathe. Um, these, this can now be done on a horizontal boring machine with the ZX range. I, 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 I think it's personally very impressive and um, you've told me about an application where uh, previously they had to use 100 tools and Correct. with this range it's so modular and the tools can be changed. Yep. Um, and what kind of savings would you expect? Well, because you have a facing slide, because you have a, a slide that moves, you can do away with multiple um, twin, twin point boring bars. So, so your, 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 your boring heads go from hundreds of required boring heads to one facing head. And you can move, you can put a slide adapter on the head as you can see here. This is a, this is a, a slide adapter that allows you to do boring from the side of the head. Um, we do three different types of slide adapters, end mount, centre mount um, and side mount. Um, and this one, as you can see, is allowing you to do um, to boring of large diameters. And movement of the facing slide allows you to increase the diameter of the of the bore that you that you're producing, so it does away with the need for having a boring bar for this size and a boring bar for for a larger size. You just move the slide. Yeah, that's brilliant, and that can be done with the machine through the Correct. machine. Correct. Yep, just by using the W axis on a horizontal boring machine. And looking at this now, Neil, we've just changed now from the boring head and we're putting an extension on here to get down a deeper bore. That's correct, yeah. This is, uh, this is what we call an MBT tool, which is a modular boring tool. Um, emphasis on the word modular. This can be made um, longer, it can be made shorter, it can be made a larger diameter just by changing a few of the components on the head. It's very simple. You can see here, this is actually doing uh, boring of um, uh, back boring, so the the slide the slide goes inside the body of the tool and opens out when it's inside the bore. So with this, you can do bottle boring and back boring um, and valve seat pockets as well. And when you mention modular, I mean it's modular in in regards to the tools that can be added to the to, to the facing head, but absolutely. it can also be automated. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Th that's. Uh, that's one of the big, the big things that, uh, that we're doing at the moment is, is automating these heads. Um, we're, we're actually tool changing heads like this um, on numerous different machines. From the small head, the, the sort of the two inch diameter bar, um, up to seven inch bar, 
two metres long. That's amazing. So yeah. am I safe to say that for the right application, this could save you a fortune? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And just yeah. to round up, Neil, um, there is going to be the introduction of a laser system so that um, you can bore and then it can check the bore and finish the bore with the introduction of that. Is this correct? That's Richard? one thing that we're working on at the moment. It's very, very new. It's very innovative. Um, it's not out yet, um, but yeah, one thing we're working on at the moment is having, having a system inside the tool that you can measure the, the bore diameter while the tool's in situ in the machine. So it saves you having to take the tool out and measure the bore. You can do it all inside uh, in, in cycle. And what's brilliant, it's manufactured in the UK. It certainly is. Um, Neil, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Gio. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. We always do learn a lot on technical corners and get a little bit more in depth. Now, we said earlier that the company's been going for over 100 years. How's this evolved? Well, I think the biggest area where it's evolved is the actual machines that, that use these tools. Um, a lot of the tools, that, when they were originally designed, were on manual machines, but a lot of them now are on CNC machines. Yeah. So we've had to develop the tool in to suit the, um, the application and the machine. Right. Mm. And automation, is that happening? Yeah, automation is a big part for us. I touched a little bit on it uh, in the technical mm. corner. Um, but um, a lot of the, particularly on the ZX product, a lot of the time that's wasted on the shop floor is time waiting for cranes to load the tools mm. onto the machine. Yeah. Um, so what we're doing is we're producing tools that can tool change. And uh, I think Lee mentioned earlier um, a facing head that's got a, a facing slide length of 1.2 meters and it weighs a ton and a quarter. And that is tool changed by the machine. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. Not a side awesome. arm though. No, <laughs> no. not a side arm. No. That's got to no, be a big machine. It's a tool machine. stacker in a machine. And it also, that machine also, not only tool changes the facing head, but it tool changes the tool, it tooling on the, on the slide, on the facing slide as well. So there's no operator intervention in the machine at all. That's key, isn't it, nowadays? Absolutely. Yeah. He's, he's been he's been watching Swarf and Chips because, as you know, we always say keep those spindles yeah, turning. Yeah. So yeah, you're, right. you're doing exactly that. Um, now your website. You've just had a new website, haven't you? We right. have, yeah, yeah. Um, ZX-Tools.com. Um, because it was a, a complete niche product on its own, we actually mm -hmm. felt it deserved its own website. Um, and we've got a full-time animator who works with us, so we've got some great animations on there. Mm, we've seen that. Showing yeah. how the tool works. Um, some great photographs and basically we're just it, all the information you need on the ZX product is there yeah. there's also then links to our distribution network um, we have got a new website for the main prop company which is going to be launched at the end of the year which will be cogsdill.com yes um, but also we have a, a uh, social media we've got a YouTube channel and obviously you could even contact myself with Neil on LinkedIn as well so we're always posting things so um, if you've got a YouTube channel, what do people need to type in? Just to... Cogsdill. Oh, okay. It's simple as, sim as that. Simple as that, yeah. Oh, yeah. fabulous. Mm. Well, thank you for joining us on the Lovely. sofa. Pleasure. We thank do you. have a little gift for Great you. Great guys. It is, actually. It's yeah, really, really, really interesting. So here we go. That's for oh, yourself. Thank What's you very your favourite drink? Coffee. Oh, that's fine. Then you can have a coffee. Then. What's your favourite? Mine's drink? coffee too. Uh, uh, oh. You're not lying. It could be whiskey or nothing. It was actually going to be gin. but <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's fine. Gin, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. There you go. I'll okay. have beer Lovely. wine then, please. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Safe Thank trip, you. guys. Thanks Thank for you coming. very much. Thanks for Thank having us. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cycle Time Challenge. Winner of this week's Cycle Time Challenge is Ross Hartley from Moog Aerospace. Now Ross, I've had a look at your LinkedIn profile and I understand you've just joined there and it says it's great because you're getting the opportunity to use your brain. And clearly you have been because you've won the Cycle Time Challenge this week and you're under stiff competition with the most entries we've ever had. So well done Ross, all these goodies are winging their way to you shortly. So USB stick, pen, post-it notes, bag, chocolate bar, power bank, t-shirt, mug, mat, all sorts of things there. Apologies though, because feeling a bit peckish and I need a power bank so you might be light a few items apologies for that now if you want the chance to win all these goodies take part in next week's cycle time challenge and now we're going to head over to Mark who's with CG Tech at their view event at Silverstone MTD on location guys I'm uh, at Silverstone race circuit I really want to be in this red thing this beautiful Ferrari here but Scott has kindly invited us down to the Very Cut user exchange event and we're going to talk to him about the actual day. 
Scott, now we're here at Silverstone. You've kindly invited us to your VUE day. Okay, now those guys are presenting at the moment. We've nipped out to have a look at this lovely Ferrari here, but uh, most people want to know exactly what the VUE day is about. Can you tell us why? Sure, the very cut user exchange, Mark, is for our existing customers and prospects alike uh, to come in here today to showcase what's in the new software. So that's what the, the user day is all about and for our users to engage with us. Um, tell us about the air user experience, is there anything they want to see us put into the software? Because you've recently uh, launched uh, version 8.1 and also driving the force uh, products as well. Is that uh, incorporated in today? Yeah, one of the presentations our users are going to see today is all about force. Um, we've had su some success in the UK with the product now since our events earlier in the year. So we're just a bit of a highlight of what we did with our force events earlier in the year. Well, sounds like a, a wonderful venue. Um, are you driving or me? That'll be you, Mark, and I'll follow you in the MTD uh, recovery van. MTD Network. Welcome to the network side of Swarf and Chips and we've got Colin on the sofa who heads it all up. Welcome to the show Colin. Thank you Lindsay and can I just say great to see you, I haven't seen you in ages and welcome to the arrival of baby Sienna. Oh thank you, she's amazing. Yeah. Anyway enough of baby talk. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> right okay let's start. You do weekly updates don't you? Colin? I do, just a two minute quick video about what's been going on the network so to lighten up your Monday morning, brighten it up, see what's been going on, any news, videos, anything like that. So a quick two minute one. Over to them. Okay, brilliant. Um, lighting up uh, Monday mornings, I don't think you can really do that, do you? I try. Yeah. yeah. Right, see, you know, you can there see you the are. What more would you want on Monday morning first thing? Mm. Right, yeah. anyway, so capacity videos. Can you explain to everyone what these are? We do loads of news videos about our engineers, overviews and things like that, but we also do capacity ones. So they've got a machine in the machine shop, a 30 second, this is a component we can make on this machine. If you've got similar parts, we do a 30 second video and it just showcases what they've got, a bit of spare capacity. And who's that aimed at? Who will see that video? That, well, other engineers, but more importantly, other buyers. So, you know, your OEMs in, in the UK, they'll see that, they'll say, oh, we've got a part similar to that. Maybe we want a new quote or maybe we need that manufacturing. It's just that little bit of inspiration, isn't it? Yep. They'll see that, oh, that company as well. Exactly. Right, right. let's go through some of those videos then. Certainly let's can. kick start with Precision Aircraft Surface Treatment. Now, this is the company yep. name, isn't it? Easy for you to say. It's not just about <laughs> aircraft, though. Surface Treatment, I'm, I'm going to have to read this because they do loads of different surface treatments, but this one is NDT, non destructive testing. So they do acid edge, penetrative floor detection and magnetic floor detection. So you're putting um, ultraviolet or fluorescent lights on it or acid etching, which is it's brilliant because you can actually see on a component if they've been working at all hard, too hard or if the machine's not working properly. It just, you know, it's amazing, really. So they've got a bit of spare capacity there. And who, um, where are they based, sorry? In Reading. In Reading. Yes. And, and who are they aimed at? A any machine, or well, anybody who's manufacturing components and they're aerospace accredited and they've got the accreditation to sign off that work as well. These days, it's very difficult to get that, that accreditation, so really worth getting in contact with Noel and Jim at Precision Aircraft Surface Treatment. Easy for you to say. I know, I've been practising. <laughs> AW Precision. AW Precision, fantastic machine shop, known for their punch die and mould work, but they've got this great machine shop, lots and lots of machines, but they've got a state-of-the-art grinder, a Studer S33. So normally, if you're looking at a grinder, you're thinking it'll do your profiles, so your rounds, your ovals, your hexagons, your flats and things like that, but this is a... Uh, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing machine, and it will do five axis grinding. Right, okay. So get in contact with Andy, AW Precision. BCMZ. Another easy one to say, yep. BCMZ. <laughs> yep, Glenn, Kevin down in Sudbury. Now they've got a, another great machine shop down there, but they've got a little bit of spare capacity on the Nakamura, and it's a WT152. Get that right. But on the video, we showed um, it's an assembly, so four different parts, nice big bar there. It's great, great example of the work they can do there. So yeah, I, I was there. watching the video actually, milling, turning, um, internal, external splines as well. Oh. It's quite a threading. Hey, over to you, Lindsay. There You're you in go. charge so now. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, even more then, so we've got, um, very quite similar in a sense, GW Martin. Yes. Now, great, great machine shop there. We regularly visit um, GW Martin. We popped down there for their 50th anniversary, had a chat with Richard and Stuart and met their local MP. But we um, did a capacity video in front of their index machine and it is a, let me get this right, triple turret twin spindle. So it's a great, great machine. So they've got the guys there who can actually um, do the design of CAD CAM to get this machine working at full capacity. So you want, if you can, both spindles work at the same time and all three turrets work at the same time. So it makes it really, really efficient, cost-effective jobs. So it's a great machine. So have a look at that video. Slightly different to those then, you've got 3D print and scan, and again, yes. that's the name of the company, isn't it? Yeah, and guess what they do? 
3D printing and scanning. That's it, yes. We popped in to see our friend <laughs> Reese down there. He does some great, great stuff. So he's 3D printed an engine. Um, also this p p um, tiny, tiny part, which is a three mil wall. And he did the other day, it was a flat concave part. Now, I want to pick Reese up on that because yes. if it's flat and con concave, that's they can't be the same, can they? It's but not, yeah. let me know. I'll wait to hear about that one. Yeah, you'll have to write in the comments, actually, Reese. That's a challenge. <laughs> yes, definitely. But, it, you know, engineers, if you want to reverse engineer things, um, prototypes, one-offs, things like that, it's really cost effective and it, it saves going into full production. You can actually get to see these parts, see what they look like before you actually go into full production. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, I was watching a video the other day. It was quite interesting. Jukewell? Jukewell, yeah. yes. Um, we popped up to see Russ from Jukewell. They've just joined the network. He's at Bolton Uni. Well, he was at Bolton Uni when we filmed because they've been involved with supercars. So with Jukewell, um, they were involved with the TKR, which was the fastest production car up to 2009. They did 260.1 miles an hour. Pretty nippy, yeah. but um, they're, doing, they're involved in the production of a new one, which is a Barus, which is coming out early next year. That will do 0 0.5 Mach, which I think is about 380 miles an hour. Wow. So pretty nippy. But I'm going to trump that because recently we popped down to Newquay Airport where we did see the guys from Bloodhound SSC. Yeah, that was all over the news, wasn't it? Was, it was, absolutely. Um, they didn't reach their their full potential because it was just a test run. They got up to 200 miles an hour, but they're aiming to get over a thousand miles an hour. Pretty impressive stuff. Very, very impressive. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I'd like to be sitting in that, to be honest. No, but it, <laughs> was, it, was, a, it was a great day out. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. A, we had a quick chat with um, Sir Richard Noble mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Wing Commander Andy Green. So, oh, great, great day out. with the celebs, eh? Yeah, just dropping the names in there. Yeah, yeah. And last but not least, Mail and Precision. Great, another, another great machine shop, surprisingly, mm. but they've got a bit of spare capacity on their Mazak Quick Turn, so nice driven tools, nice little jobs on that, so watch that video, our friend Steve, because they also manufacture the Mail and Pallet Master. Yes, of course they do, because they were here as well. They were, yeah. Well, we hardly f could get Steve in here, because he's so tall, No, he isn't is he? really <laughs> tall, isn't he? <laughs> sorry, Steve. <laughs> You're not sorry. Um, thank you Correct. so much, Colin. Means That's it, isn't it, for the network? That's so you're it. talking about capacity. Everyone's busy, though, aren't they? That's it. All the engineers I speak to, how's it going? Oh, Colin... It's crazy, you know, I want to come and do some filming, for example. We haven't got time, we're so busy. I don't know what's going on. It's yeah. brilliant. It's a great thing, really. And it's all because of MTD Network. Yes, I agree. Yes. Thank you so <laughs> much, Colleen. Lindsay, thanks ever so much. Deal of the week. Andy, a Fanuc Robocut C600 B series machine, wire cut machine. This is available from stock here at Fanuc in, uh, in Coventry. Tell us about the model. Yes, it's a mid range machine, 600X travel. 400 wide travel with a 310 as standard and a 410Z option. Okay, so you've got the option of the 410, so you can go a, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Is this your most popular model when it comes to the sort of size? It's one of the most popular ones. This and the 400, sort of quite sort of even, but yeah, very popular model. What's some, tell me some of the distinctive features. Tell me, you know, I'm, I'm in the market for a wire cut machine, I'm coming here. What, what are you going to say to me as a salesman? What's going to push me towards you? Apart from the high accuracy, the reliability is second to none. All three machines have a reliable AWF system. What, what, what's that? What do you mean? Auto wire feed system. Not only for connecting the wire to start cutting, but also a repair function if the wire was to break during the cutting. Okay, now you, you say um, reliability as well and the build quality. Um, it's a bold statement, but how, how, what, what gives it the build quality? Tell us about how it's made up. Well, this, Purely the, old, the Japanese design, everything's built to last. Well, this machine is a product for life. We support and supply parts for life. Okay, tell me about that part. So literally, uh, any part for this I could get for the lifetime of? Yeah, that's correct. Um, we have machines at the moment that are 25, 30 year old that we still supply parts for. So this machine is going to outlive my working days. Um, You're not that old, are you? Pardon? You're not that old, are you? Well, you know, <laughs> might not look it, but... No, it, it is one of the panic policies, yeah guaranteed parts um, so complete peace of mind that, is, that the, is that one of the first things you go for you say right okay I've got someone coming here to look at I'm going to push the Fanuc name the Fanuc brand the Fanuc build then we come on to the features so you mentioned auto wire feed what else is that well where do I start there's so many features on there you know you're lucky if you can use 30% of the features so give us an idea of what some of these features might be um, you've got the core stitch on here every machine's got the core stitch now so that's available on all machines. We have new features such as 3D probing. So we can install a automatic or a manual probe onto the machine, which allows us to do our basic date and vining, but also a 3D pitch. So 
if the top of the job can't be sitting flat, we can take three points on the top of the job and incline the z-axis to be perpendicular to the top of that job. OK, neat, neat. What about extra axes? Are they available? Extra, all available on all machines. Again, we have our own rotary table called a CCR. So this is a small, compact rotary table. Takes up to 40 kilograms in weight. Uh, very accurate again. So give me one more then, Andy. Time is short. An another reason, another thing you'd be pushing about this model? Robocut Cam Eye is our offline programming system. It's a full-blown CAD CAM package completely and only designed for Fanuc Robocup machines. Easy to use, would I pick it up quickly? Very easy to use, one day training, you're up and running. And when you get into those battles that we're talking about now, do you win them more often than not? I'm, I'm doing a good proportion, yeah, very good at the moment. Thank you for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And if you want to have a go at our cycle time challenge, make sure you put your guesses in the comments box below. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.